It's the Weather Blender blog for the 21st of April. Hi, everybody. Spencer Atkins here with you. Real quick, want to start off with that volcano. No way I'm going to try and say the name of that thing. It's just crazy. Anyhow, uh, once again, still kind of churning out the smoke, the ash, and uh, very interesting to see that the weather patterns obviously are influencing that. A couple of shots from NASA that I wanted to share. Uh, one of them shows you from the top down, and you can basically see here uh, where Iceland is outlined, where the United Kingdom is outlined, and uh, of course, yeah, all the letters and vowels and everything that you can see it spelled right there. And the ash plume, I've drawn it in the yellow line. It's kind of circulating into that area of low pressure, so it can kind of curve a little bit to the west and then back to the east. So you can get some reprieves from time to time, but man, it's still just uh, really doing its thing over there and trying to get some flights going. Obviously, that's a, a situation literally in flux. I want to show you another view. This is uh, what they call a LIDAR, L-I-D-A-R, and it's just another method of looking at the atmosphere. This is kind of like an angular side cut. You can see France in the middle, Great Britain over here on the left, and it clouds stand up somewhere around, well, 30,000 feet, the cloud tops uh, out here to the west of Iceland, uh, just to the uh, northeast of Spain. Again, you're getting up to about 30,000 feet. But if you look at that volcanic plume that's uh, right there, again, uh, NASA's showing us that the top of that is about 20,000 feet. So it's still kind of hugging the ground. Uh, planes can fly over top of that, but the problem is they have to fly through that to get there. So that's been one of the big, big problems. Now in terms of how it affects the climate, still many questions about that because you'd want to see it get up to about 30, 40,000 feet, maybe even you know break up there into the stratosphere, uh, 40,000 feet plus sometimes. So that would have a much greater influence, but we haven't seen it up that high. I think there will be some cooling from this, but maybe not as much as if it were in the stratosphere. Let's jump to the weather models real quick, talk about what's happening, what's not happening. Well, I tell you that basically we're seeing here uh, a couple of little showers and they're passing by pretty quickly. Those are going to scoot on to the east, leaving us maybe at most about three tenths of an inch of some rain in southern West Virginia, southeast Kentucky. This is going into the middle portion of Wednesday now when things kind of clear out. I'll just tell you that basically Wednesday into Thursday, we may see a few sprinkles Thursday afternoon. Eh, not bad, not a bad deal. So we jump from Thursday all the way out until the next opportunity to see some rain. We're showing you the GFS model. Uh, actually, this is Friday night into Saturday, and Saturday night, things really get juicy. We have a low pressure out to the northwest of us. That's going to bring warm air advection, we call it that. Most people just call it warm air arriving. Anyhow, so we do have showers and storms. They'll be kicking in here. That'll bring us the kind of rain that we've been needing to see. The only problem is that it looks like the pattern gets hung up a little bit with another chance of rain on Sunday and also on Monday. Staying warm though, temperatures on those days will be in the 70s. A quick scan of the seven day forecast has temperatures running in the 60s and again by the weekend well into the 70s, some mid 70s uh, despite the rain. So it looks like things are going to stay warm. Obviously we need to see a little bit of rain. It's been so dry that will help the situation. That's it for now. I hope you're going to have a great rest of the week, and we'll have more right here on your Weather Blender blog.